The slap that is still reverberating through the entertainment world and beyond. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 23 scandals of each year. The former Oscar nominee will now have to spend 14 days behind bars. For this list, we'll be looking at the biggest public controversies of the 21st century so far and picking the worst offender from each year. Do you remember these stories being in the news? Let us know in the comments. 2000. Angelina Jolie kisses her brother. It was the kiss that shocked the globe and set the media ablaze. In March of 2000, Angelina Jolie won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Girl Interrupted. While attending the after-party, the freshly honored Jolie and her older brother James Haven locked lips. The smooch was brief, but it was immortalized through the magic of cameras, and it was quickly plastered on the front pages of newspapers and gossip magazines. People questioned whether the two shared an inappropriate relationship, and interviews inquired about the kiss for years. For Jolie, who was a bit of a newbie at the time, that night encapsulated everything that is both good and bad about the industry. You know, everybody made such a big deal about my behavior at the Oscars, and I'm here tonight to say that my relationship with my brother is perfectly normal. 2001. Winona Ryder Goes Shopping Nowadays, Winona Ryder is known for playing Joyce Byers on Stranger Things. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I need you to tell me what to do. What should I do? How do I get to you? It's a comeback for the ages because for a while there, Ryder's career was dead in the water. Various factors caused it to implode, including a string of not so great movies and her infamous 2001 shoplifting incident. Shortly before Christmas, Ryder was arrested for stealing over $5,000 worth of clothes from a Beverly Hills Saks Fifth Avenue. Testified Ryder was tracked on camera as she shopped for designer clothes. He said the actress walked past three cash registers with a pile of clothes and handbags before leaving the store. This wasn't just a slap on the wrist and forget about it kind of crime. No, Ryder was brought up on numerous felony charges. And while she avoided prison, she nevertheless faced a slew of punishments. These included hefty fines, nearly 500 hours of community service, and three years probation. Your decisions and conduct from then and from today's date in large part are going to define your public reputation and image and possibly your future freedom. 2002. Martha Stewart does a little insider trading. Few business people reach the cultural clout of Martha Stewart. It seemed like this woman did everything, from writing best-selling books to hosting cooking shows to starting her own media empire. Casey is credited with helping pioneer the cultivation of organic ginger throughout the Northeast. And I'm so happy to have you here today. Oh, thanks for having me. But everything came crashing down with the Imclone scandal. In short, Stewart was tipped off about the falling stock values of Imclone systems, causing her to sell all of her shares. By doing so, she avoided the loss of almost $46,000. This is illegal and is known as insider trading. While the incident occurred at the end of December 2001, most of the fallout was relegated to the following year. Stewart was heavily criticized by the media, eventually serving five months in prison and two years of supervised release. Did you learn anything about yourself during that time? Did you learn that you're tougher than you thought you were? No, I'm a tough person from start. I've always been a tough person. Tough meaning I can survive. 2003, Michael Jackson is arrested. Despite the undeniable contributions that he made to music and pop culture as a whole, Michael Jackson's lasting legacy will forever be cloudy. Abuse allegations against minors followed Jackson throughout the 90s and early 2000s, and everything came to a head in 2003. But in 2003, he made a monumental mistake. by inviting journalist Martin Bashir to show his life at Neverland. In February of that year, the scandalous documentary Living with Michael Jackson was released and led to the musician being charged on several counts involving the underage that December. While Jackson vehemently denied the charges, public opinion on his character was permanently marred. It was the most scandalous pop culture event of the year, and Jackson went to trial in 2005. He was found not guilty on all charges. Not guilty 10 times. Not guilty for Michael Jackson. In California, a dramatic conclusion to one of the most sensational trials in entertainment history. 2004, the infamous halftime show. 
If someone says that halftime show, most people will immediately know what they're talking about. Yeah, there have been a few iconic Super Bowl halftime shows, but none are as well known as Super Bowl 38. The legendary night was February 1st, 2004, with the Carolina Panthers playing Tom Brady's New England Patriots. Brady has it, throw it, touchdown! The halftime show was being performed by a number of entertainers, including Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson. In the climactic moment of the performance, Timberlake ripped Jackson's outfit and accidentally exposed her breast to 150 million people. The fallout was immediate and widespread. Enormous fines were issued, MTV was banned from producing halftime shows, and Jackson's career imploded. All the emphasis was put on me, mm -hmm. not on Justin. And uh, <laughs> just, Justin, we were friends. It also birthed the creation of YouTube and entered the term wardrobe malfunction into the Webster's Dictionary. 2005, Kanye West expresses his politics. 2005 was a very odd year for the famous rapper. The critically acclaimed Late Registration was released on August 30th and earned him widespread praise and popularity. I gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die. Just three days later, he appeared alongside Mike Myers on the charity program A Concert for Hurricane Relief and received widespread condemnation. While Myers stuck to the script about Hurricane Katrina, West did his own thing and commented on racial politics and then-President George Bush. The destruction of the spirit of the people of southern Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. It surprised everyone, including the evidently shaken Myers and co-presenter Chris Tucker. It was a huge media event and was later spoofed by Myers on Saturday Night Live. Oh, Kanye. Hey, so uh, how's everything going? <laughs> I haven't seen you since, uh, uh, when was it? <laughs> the telephone? Oh, right, I forgot. In later years, West would interrupt Taylor Swift at the VMAs and make horribly anti Semitic comments, continuing his ongoing string of troublesome actions. 2006 Mel Gibson's anti Semitic rant. While an enormously popular actor and director, controversy has followed Mel Gibson throughout his career. He was accused of homophobia back in the early 90s, and in 2006, he received widespread criticism for some anti-Semitic remarks. I guess I must have been a little overwrought. So, and that's what happens, too much pressure, too much work. You, uh, uh, you do things uh, that go against good judgment. After getting arrested for drunk driving, Gibson made a derogatory statement about Jewish people, claiming that they were, quote, responsible for all the wars in the world. The quote was referenced on the arrest report, which was in turn leaked by TMZ, resulting in a firestorm of bad publicity. While it was the biggest pop culture scandal of 2006, the incident did not tarnish his career. Alcohol is used sure. to and it's excuse behavior. It's always, uh, well, Alcohol is used to kill pain, and, uh, um, and it is no excuse, by the way. It's not a good enough excuse. Gibson continued to star in movies, and in 2016, he released the critically acclaimed Hacksaw Ridge, which received six Oscar nominations, including Best Director. 2007, Britney Spears melts down. A string of tragedies hit pop icon Britney Spears in the mid-2000s. She filed for divorce from Kevin Federline in November 2006, and her aunt died of cancer just two months later in early 2007. 2007, life in the spotlight seeming to take a toll. The young mother of two appearing to publicly struggle amid a divorce, custody battles, and continued media scrutiny. While this was occurring, Spears also struggled with substance use disorder, prompting less than 24 hours stay in rehab. This, of course, generated much discussion in gossip magazines, and the media closely followed the singer's personal life. The intense pressure and publicity culminated in Spears shaving her head, which is arguably one of the most infamous pop culture moments of the decade. This meltdown resulted in Spears being placed under the legal care of her father by the next year, which resulted in its own long string of controversies and scandals, with the conservatorship finally ending in 2021. Britney, as of today, is a free woman, and she's an independent woman, and the rest with her support system will be up to Britney. 2008, the Tom Cruise Scientology video. 
arguably the biggest movie star of our time is also in arguably the biggest cult of our time. Tom Cruise has been involved with Scientology since the mid-80s and has since become its most vocal and famous advocate. Yeah. I've been a uh, Scientologist for over 30 years yeah. and um, it's something that as, as you know, without it, uh, I wouldn't be where I am, yeah. you know? So it's a beautiful religion. And I'm very proud. In January of 2008, members of the activist group Anonymous leaked a video that showed Cruz speaking favorably about the so-called religion. The video was made by and for his fellow Scientologists, but Anonymous's project Chanology leaked it as a form of protest. Being Scientologists, you look at someone and you know absolutely that you can help them. So for me, it really is KSW, and it's just like, it's, it's something that, uh, I don't mince words with that. Its release caused further publicity to be shed on Cruz and his disputable lifestyle, and its removal from YouTube sparked a further debate of its own. However, the video has since been re-uploaded, and despite the brief scandal, Cruz's career didn't appear to be tarnished in the least. 2009, the Tiger Woods cheating scandal. Even the greatest athletes of all time aren't immune from public scrutiny. Tiger Woods is perhaps the greatest golfer the world has ever seen, and in 2009, he earned his 10th PGA Player of the Year award. <laughs> However, that year also saw him facing a major infidelity scandal that nearly ruined his career. Throughout the months of November and December, it was revealed that Woods had repeatedly cheated on his then-wife, Elin Nordegren, with over a dozen women. What in the world, we wondered, was Tiger Woods doing around any of these people? I was living a, a life of a lie. I really was. And I was doing a lot of things, as I said, that hurt a lot of people. And stripping away denial and rationalization, you start coming to the truth of who you really are. The couple got a divorce, and Woods lost a ton of sponsorship deals. Whether owing to the scandal, other personal problems, or multiple injuries, Woods would not win another major championship for many subsequent years, with 2019's Masters Tournament trophy being perhaps the most notable. Many doubted we'd ever see it, but here it is. The return to glory. 2010, Lindsay Lohan goes to jail. Many child stars experience tragic downfalls, and Lindsay Lohan is one of them. Her career started falling in the mid-2000s when she started experiencing severe personal, professional, and legal problems. 2010 was a particularly difficult year for the actress, as she spent it in and out of jail. In July, she was sentenced to 90 days after violating her probation, but spent just two weeks inside. Defendant is now remanded to custody to serve the 90-day jail sentence. The cameras were shut off. The handcuffs went on. Lohan was led through a side door, sent off to jail in this two-car convoy. However, Lohan was only free for a couple of months, as she was briefly sent back in September after failing a drug test. For many, the repeating jail sentences was proof that Lohan was not getting better, and it did nothing to help her failing career. Fortunately, the 2020s seemed to be looking up for the actress thanks to her deal with Netflix. Okay, I love... Hello? Bad connection? Something like that. 2011, the Charlie Sheen debacle. It wasn't long before the cultural focus shifted from Lindsay Lohan to Charlie Sheen. Sheen was in the midst of a substance use disorder when he went on Alex Jones's radio show and spouted some wildly inappropriate comments. I'm tired. I am so tired of pretending like my life isn't perfect and bitching and just winning every second, and I'm not perfect and bitching, and just delivering the goods at every frickin' turn. He called Alcoholics Anonymous a cult and made numerous offensive remarks towards his boss, Chuck Lorre, like calling him a, quote, stupid little man. The resulting outrage was too much for CBS and Warner Brothers, and the rest of Two and a Half Men's current season was canned, followed by Sheen's contract termination a few months later. But the problematic behavior didn't stop, and Sheen became a walking meme with his bizarre quotes and statements. Where do these words I don't come know. from, Charlie? All those words just sound cool <laughs> together. It comes from my my grand wizard master. I don't know, man. I just stuff just comes out, and it's entertaining, and it's fun, and it sounds different than all the other garbage people are spewing. You know. His outlandish conduct was all over the internet throughout 2011, 2012, the Jimmy Savile scandal. Jimmy Savile was a renowned public figure in the United Kingdom, primarily known for hosting the television music show Top of the Pops. Right now, thank you, thank you, my dear. 
How about a quick trip up towards the top of the charts? Number four to be exact with Chicago. Savile died in 2011 at the age of 84, and it wasn't long after that his reputation came into question. The very next year, it was revealed that Savile had mistreated hundreds of women and girls throughout many decades. Allegations of this sort were made when Savile was alive, but those were mostly dismissed and forgotten. The silence has been shattered, and more of those who were scared or felt they wouldn't be believed are coming forward. Karen Ward had told BBC's Newsnight last year of what she saw as a 14-year-old at the BBC, but to her anger, they didn't run it. The reports became international news and shocked those who viewed Savile as a charitable public figure. Sometimes the monsters are hiding in plain sight. 2013, Oscar Pistorius kills his girlfriend. Paralympic runner Oscar Pistorius was a big topic of discussion in 2012, being the first double-leg amputee to compete at the Summer Olympics. This summer, here in London, he will finally get two shots at gold, running in the individual 400-meter race and the 4x400-meter relay. But the very next year, the South African athlete was in the news for a very different reason. On February 14th, 2013, Pistorius killed his then-girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp, by shooting her through the bathroom door. Pistorius claimed that it was an accident and was eventually found guilty of culpable homicide, receiving a prison sentence of five years. This is almost certainly the best verdict Oscar Pistorius could have hoped for. It means the prosecution failed to convince the judge that the athlete meant to kill anybody. But it still means the judge found him criminally negligent. However, this sentence was later overturned, and Pistorius was found guilty of homicide. His prison term was extended to the country's minimum of 15 years, minus his time already served. South Africa's Supreme Court calling Pistorius's original jail sentence inappropriate and raising it. 2014, the downfall of Bill Cosby. Like Jimmy Savile, Cosby had been accused of abuse in the past, but these reports were mostly ignored. Everything changed in 2014 when the allegations were brought to the forefront of the cultural conversation. All of the stories and the recent decision by Cosby to leave the board of trustees of his beloved Temple University has many suggesting it is past time for Cosby himself to address this scandal. This was the same year that Woody Allen's adoptive daughter, Dylan Farrow, accused him of mistreatment in an open letter in the New York Times. Some critics and Woody Allen himself have faulted the Times for publishing it without a full response from Allen. Well, yesterday, Allen did get his say. The Times published his lengthy rebuttal, blasting the allegations as false. About 60 women claimed that they were assaulted by Cosby, with some incidents dating back to the 1960s. Cosby quickly went from America's dad to persona non grata. He was stripped of awards, dropped by organizations, and taken to court on felony charges. He was eventually found guilty of aggravated indecent assault, but was released from prison in June 2021 on a legal technicality. Tonight, Bill Cosby is a free man. His conviction tossed out, his record wiped clean. He cannot be retried. He appeared briefly before reporters outside his home. 2015, Deflategate. On January 18th, 2015, the New England Patriots faced the Indianapolis Colts in the AFC Championship game. Third one play action. Now it's time for play. Nate Solder, tackle eligible. The Patriots would obliterate the Colts 45 to seven and go on to win the Super Bowl. But the victory came with a major asterisk. People argued that the Patriots were using illegally deflated footballs, which had given them a significant advantage on offense and thereby resulting in the enormous blowout. Sources telling our sister network ESPN, this is the play that led to the discovery of what is being dubbed Deflategate. The media had a field day with this story, and Patriots quarterback Tom Brady was accused of being complicit in the enterprise. I think I heard it all at this point, and it's ridiculous. Brady earned a four-game suspension, and the Patriots a $1 million fine. 2016, Loctigate. The mid-2010s were full of various gates within the sporting world, whether it was allegedly deflating footballs or lying about a robbery. Olympic swimmer Ryan Lochte was in Brazil for the Summer Games when he was allegedly robbed by men posing as police officers. 
But upon further investigation, it was discovered that Lochte and some other swimmers had vandalized a gas station and paid off the responding security guards. At this exact moment, what the police can confirm is that there was no robbery in the way that it was reported by the athletes. The incident overshadowed the rest of the 2016 Olympics, and many viewed the occasion as a national embarrassment. Lochte subsequently received numerous punishments, including lost sponsorships, community service, and a 10-month unpaid suspension. I'm just really sorry about, I'm embarrassed um, for myself, my family, especially those guys, USA Swimming, the whole Olympic Games, um, everyone watching. 2017, the Harvey Weinstein allegations. The world changed forever in October 2017, when the New York Times and The New Yorker broke the story of movie producer Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein was a co-founder of Miramax and worked with many prominent filmmakers, giving him incredible power within the movie industry. The techniques Harvey Weinstein used are, I think, important for us all to talk about because while they are extreme, they open a window into a set of tools available if you're that rich and that powerful and that bent on stopping dissent about you. He used his position of power to commit sexual violence, with more than 80 women having accused him of abuse, including prominent actresses like Kate Blanchett, Angelina Jolie, and Gwyneth Paltrow. Weinstein became the face of a systemic issue and was sentenced to 23 years in prison. The scandal helped launch the Me Too movement, which saw many controlling and powerful figures finally getting their comeuppance. Since we're seeing a watershed time where people not only started talking about it then, but continue to talk about it. From Hockey Canada, to athletics, to schools, to parents, people are talking about this and saying we need to take action. 2018, Alison Mack is arrested for cult activity. Allison Mack was a bona fide TV star throughout the 2000s, starring as Clark Kent's best friend, Chloe Sullivan, in Smallville. Uh, didn't you just, uh, weren't you? I took a shortcut. Through what, a black hole? About midway through the show in 2006, Mack fell in with the multi-level marketing company slash cult known as Nexium. She quickly worked her way up the ranks and was eventually made second in command of DOS, a subset within Nexium that trafficked women for its founder, Keith Raniere. These recruits were subjected to extreme conditions and branded with Ranieri's initials. You've called Keith Ranieri a master manipulator. How do you characterize Alison Mack's role? I'd say she was the most charismatic co-leader that anyone could ask for. The branding was personally overseen by Mack herself. Everything came to a head in April 2018 when Mack was arrested by the FBI for trafficking and forced labor conspiracy. She pled guilty to racketeering and helped prosecute Ranieri, resulting in a sentence of just three years. Prosecutors asked the judge to give Mack a reduced sentence because of the, quote, substantial assistance she provided with their investigation into the cult. 2019, Jeffrey Epstein. 2019 was unfortunately a big year for sex-related crimes. Famous singer R. Kelly was arrested that July and sentenced to 30 years in prison for violating the Mann Act, a law that prohibits the transportation and trafficking of women for nefarious purposes. When asked by the judge if he wanted to make a statement, he declined. When sentencing Kelly, the judge said, the public has to be protected from behaviors like this. That same month, prominent financier and socialite Jeffrey Epstein was also arrested for human trafficking. His scandalous sex ring earned enormous media buzz and allegedly involved some big names, including Prince Andrew, Duke of York. He was jailed. This yes. was your friend. How yes. did you feel about it? Well, I ceased contact with him after uh, I was aware that he was um, under investigation. Prince Andrew's reputation was ruined by the scandal, and Epstein infamously died in jail shortly after his arrest. This earned an even bigger reaction in the media, as many people theorized that Epstein was killed by someone as opposed to taking his own life to ensure his silence. Here's an NBC News special report. NBC News has learned that disgraced financier Jeffrey Epstein is dead. Epstein took his own life while he was behind bars. 2020, the collapse of Ellen DeGeneres. 2020 was a whiplash year for comedian and talk show host Ellen DeGeneres. That January, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association presented her with the Carol Burnett Award, owing to her outstanding contributions to television. Just six months later, her career was crumbling around her. Shocking allegations 
on their own. But this was at the Ellen Show. Ellen Show, a woman who has built a reputation and in fact an empire on the idea of us all being nice, being kind to each other. It all began in July when BuzzFeed News broke a story about DeGeneres' supposed heinous backstage behavior. Many anonymous employees came forward, alleging that DeGeneres was a horrible boss who intimidated her staff, ignored workplace harassment claims, and engaged in racist behavior. It caused enormous controversy for DeGeneres and effectively ruined her reputation. The truth is, I am that person that you see on TV. I am also a lot of other things. I, sometimes I get sad, I get mad, I, I get anxious, I get frustrated, I get impatient. And I am working on all of that. The Ellen DeGeneres show came to an end in 2022, but many people were done with the host before then. 2021, the Alec Baldwin shooting. The world received upsetting news on October 21st, 2021, when it was reported that Alec Baldwin had accidentally killed a woman named Helena Hutchins with a prop gun. Investigators say Baldwin fired the fatal shot that killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injured director Joel Souza, who was seen in a sling on Friday. Both were working on a movie called Rust when the incident took place. Baldwin was handed a prop revolver with a live round and practiced his shot while Hutchins set up the camera. Unfortunately, the live round went off and struck Hutchins in the chest. She was airlifted to a nearby hospital, but tragically died of her injuries. Her family later filed a lawsuit against those responsible for the shooting, and this was settled in October 2022. While Baldwin and others still could face possible criminal charges, this settlement means that the biggest civil suit against them will be dismissed. Filming is set to begin again in January 2023. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 2022, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. Nothing brings people together like a good court trial. Between April and June of 2022, ex-couple Johnny Depp and Amber Heard battled each other in court, with each suing the other for defamation. Well, Johnny claims his career was destroyed after he was defamed in a newspaper article Amber wrote about domestic violence. The world watched the proceedings with bated breath, and it seemed like the case was trending for months on end. Legal experts and media personalities added their opinions, onlookers fervently watched the live stream, and social media was set alight with discussion. And yes, lots of nasty comments towards Heard. The social Remember media that, ripple one? effect has That's been correct. almost inescapable. From, From the trending hashtag justice for Johnny Depp to the viral memes mocking Amber Heard. A lot can be read into the trial, including our collective obsession with celebrity and justice. And in the end, no one really won. Both sides were found to have defamed the other, and both were awarded damages. In the end, the jury awarded Johnny Depp $10 million in compensatory damages and another $5 million in punitive damages. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.